In this case, we will elaborate on the treatment of the maxillary arch utilizing a multi-level surgical guide protocol from the treatment plan to the delivery of the provisional screw-retained implant prosthesis. This case began with verifying the fit and aesthetics of the patient's existing denture. It was important that the denture utilized for implant planning has a well-fitting base and that the teeth were in a relatively acceptable position. The initial records for implant planning followed the dual scan protocol. Here you can see the Shermark ball stickers were used as radiographic markers to relate the two CBCT images in the planning software. The markers are distributed throughout the denture on both the lingual and buccal surfaces, staying away from the teeth. A bite registration was taken to ensure the bite relationship was captured, and this will serve as a bite index to prevent the denture from moving during the CBCT acquisition. As the name of the process implies, the dual scan technique involves the acquisition of two scans. The first is the patient wearing the denture with the fiduciary markers in place. In the patient scan, the radiographic markers should be easily visualized along with the patient's bony anatomy. The second scan is of the denture all by itself. The position of the fiduciary markers should not be moved from one scan to the next. These markers are how the two scans are aligned together. If both the upper and lower are being evaluated for implant placement, each denture should be scanned individually. Additionally, scans of the dentures utilizing the Medit i700 wireless were acquired to aid in the fabrication of the immediate load provisional. This multi-level surgical guide is designed to sit directly on the bone. Therefore, a full thickness flap was reflected, extending the flap to ensure the guide fully seats just on the bone and no tissue interferes. Next, the foundation guide and the mounting guide were connected with the blue interlocking pins prior to being positioned intraorally. The foundation guide seats only on the buccal surface. To ensure the guide is seated in the correct position, we have to utilize this mounting guide to verify the fit by ensuring it is flush with the bone. Once in a stable position, the anchor pin osteotomies were drilled and yellow anchor pins were placed to secure this foundation guide in place. We then remove the blue interlocking pins and the mounting guide is removed, leaving the foundation guide by itself securely in place. The platform of the foundation guide is then utilized for bone reduction guide. A flat instrument can be used to verify the bone reduction and make sure it is even with the flat surface of this foundation guide. The osteotomy guide is then seated on top of the foundation guide and the same blue interlocking pins are reinserted to secure this portion of the guide in place. With the guide secured, the osteotomies were sequentially drilled following the approved digital treatment plan. The drilling sequence was performed according to the pre-planned guided surgical protocol. Han tapered implants were placed with ease, being sure to align the hex of the implant mount with the hex of the surgical guide sleeve. After the implants were placed, the interlocking pins and the osteotomy guide were then removed. The implant stability quotient, or ISQ value, was calculated using the Penguin 2 Osteo Integration Monitor. The acceptable stability range for cross-arch immediate loading with a provisional implant prosthesis is a measurement somewhere between 55 and 85. Ideally, I prefer to achieve at least a value in the mid to upper 60s when immediate loading cross arch implant restorations. For single unit restorations, I do not load a restoration lower than a value of 70. Based on the torque and stability of an implant, the best loading protocol is determined. This can either be a cover screw, a healing abutment, or the multi-unit abutments. For this procedure, our goal is to insert these multi-unit abutments. The primary stability and torque value were sufficient for immediate loading, so we proceeded to seat the prosthetic delivery guide and secure it in place with the blue interlocking pins. The MUAs were then seated and torqued to 35 newton centimeters. This is the manufacturer's recommended torque value for each of these implants and multi-unit abutments. The correct orientation of the angled MUAs was indicated on the surgical guide for ease of positioning. The interlocking pins and prosthetic delivery guide were temporarily removed. This allowed the placement of the gasket. This gasket will protect the surgical site while picking up the immediate fixed screw retained provisional. The gasket really prevents the restorative acrylic from contaminating your fresh surgical site. Once the gasket is in place, the prosthetic delivery guide with the blue interlocking pins are reinserted. The laser labeled pre-cut temporary cylinders that were provided with the case were then seated in the appropriate position and hand tightened into place. 
The immediate provisional is seated onto the prosthetic delivery guide. There should be a minimum of one millimeter of space around each of the titanium cylinders to ensure it passively seats and there is adequate room for additional pickup material. The minimum of one millimeter is not met and adjustment may be required. With the prosthesis in position, the blockout shims, which are also included, were inserted into each titanium cylinder. This step prevents any acrylic from accidentally covering the screw head or the access channel during the pickup process. The pickup material was then flowed into the acrylic channels located on the buckle, lingual, and occlusal surfaces, securing each titanium cylinder to the immediate provisional prosthesis. The prosthesis with the looted titanium cylinders was then removed from the mouth and adjustments were finished in the lab. The prosthetic delivery guide and gasket were removed. To assist in contouring and suturing of the soft tissue, MUA cover caps were hand tightened into place. The anchor pins were then removed, allowing the foundation guide to be detached. Once suturing was complete, the MUA temporary healing caps were removed and the provisional was seated. The provisional was torqued to 15 newton centimeters. Again, this is the manufacturer's recommended torque value for these multi-unit abutment screws. Teflon tape was placed into the access channels to protect each of the prosthetic screws. The access channels were then closed with a temporary material we utilized Firmit in this case. With the patient sitting upright, the occlusion is verified. Ideally, there should be minimal working and non-working contacts with evenly distributed centric contacts to provide freedom of movement while minimizing the lateral stresses on your implants. The implant positions were confirmed utilizing a post-op CBCT image. This is Dr. Taylor Manalili. Remember, advanced procedures like the immediate loading of implants for fixed full arch restorations are becoming more predictable with the advances in technology. Prosthetically driven guided implant placement really allows for the optimal restorative outcome and happy patients. Stay tuned for more clinical technique videos. Thank you.